If you've followed Formula 1 in the slightest since 2013, then you've probably heard about Esteban Gutierrez. Whether you remember him for his time at Sauber, his time at Haas, or his most recent stint as a test driver for Mercedes. But I'm fairly confident you don't remember him for anything in IndyCar. Well, in reality, he actually started a couple races back in the summer of 2017 that nobody really remembers or cares about. Well, today, I'm here to go over them. This is the story of Esteban Gutierrez's IndyCar career. Now, to start this story, story off, we need to go back to Saturday, May 20th, 2017. Esteban Gutierrez is making what would be his final Formula E start for Tech Cheetah. Racing in the streets of Paris, Esteban finished 11th. Shortly after this race, thousands of miles away in Indianapolis, qualifying is underway for the 101st running of the Indy 500. Things are going well, with 18 cars qualified without incident. This was until Sebastian Bourdais enters the second turn on his third qualifying lap. Both in the 231s, the first driver to put any lap in the 231s. So forward trouble! Oh, what a crash! What a terrible crash! Up and over, car flip. Bourdais would sustain a fractured pelvis and would be out of the car for the foreseeable future. With this, Dale Coyne Racing needed a replacement driver, and they would find one in the form of Esteban Gutierrez. Of the nine races without Bourdais, Esteban would race in seven of them, the only exceptions being Indy and Texas when James Davidson and Tristan Vautier filled in. With the background information out of the way, we can get into Esteban's debut at the duel in Detroit. With the Belle Isle street circuit not really being known as a friendly one for rookies, you'd expect Esteban to struggle. Well, in reality, he didn't do too bad. Now, I mean, he didn't do great either, as he would qualify 19th for his IndyCar debut. However, he did out-qualify his fellow rookie teammate and reigning Indy Lights champion Ed Jones, who was 21st. As for the race itself, Esteban would finish exactly where he qualified in 19th, one lap down. As for his teammate Jones, he would finish 9th, putting together a great drive right after his best IndyCar performance at the Indy 500. The second Detroit race would be a slight improvement for Gutierrez, as although he qualified 19th again, he would make up 5 places and stay on the lead lap by the checkered flag. He would of course take a break for the next week at Texas, but then get back in the seat for Road America. His third IndyCar race aligned pretty well with his first, with Gutierrez qualifying and finishing 17th. The only difference between this race and his first was the fact that he failed to out-qualify his teammate, as Jones qualified and finished well clear of his teammate. Iowa would be his oval debut and would actually be his best performance. Starting 18th, he avoided accidents and mechanical issues in the bullring to record his best IndyCar finish of 13th. However, from here on, it was pretty much all downhill. In Toronto, he would have a hard practice crash against the outside wall in Turn 11, setting a bad tone for the race where he started last and finished 14th. Mid-Ohio was looking like a great opportunity for Esteban, as he qualified 12th. A brilliant performance in comparison to his previous five races. A 20th place finish in the race, however, had to have hurt. Then, at his last IndyCar race at Pocono, he would be classified last after a crash in Turn 3. With Sebastian Bourdais return, Esteban was out of Dale Coyne Racing and IndyCar as a whole. In fact, his final IndyCar outing at Pocono stands to be his final open-wheel race, with Esteban not competing in any open-wheel racing series since. Now, I won't completely rule out Esteban Gutierrez returning to IndyCar before the end of his career, but there haven't been any rumblings of a comeback, so from the looks of it, his stats will remain unchanged. Changed. In seven IndyCar starts, Esteban Gutierrez would have zero top 10s, three top 15s, one DNF, and a best finish of 13th. Although his IndyCar career is brief, unremarkable, and frankly forgettable, it's worth talking about because as of July 2022, it marks the final open wheel starts of a former F1 driver. 